Welcome to Raw Vision and our first Raw Vision preview show for season 2011. We're going to preview the upcoming game every week of this season and what you can expect is a member of the footy department to have a chat, interviews with the players, milestones and news about the weeks ahead as well as the last time we met the team that we're coming up against that week. Round one is tonight against the Blues at the MCG and we're joined by Craig Cameron, head of the footy department. How are you going Craig? Good Matthew, good to be here. Looking forward to tonight? Yeah, I can't wait. It's going to be yeah. fantastic. It's great that we're kicking off the season again and um, hopefully we'll have a big crowd and their members get along. Yeah, and what are the expectations of the players tonight? The big pre-season, long pre-season. How did you feel the pre-season went? Oh, look, it was a patchy pre-season. We, we loaded our players quite heavily through parts of it, so um, some of our form was up and down. We introduced um, a number of new parts of the game plan as a, as a pre-season unfolded and also blooded a lot of younger players. A lot of, our, a lot of the guys on our list actually played in the seniors over pre-season. So, look, on the face of it, some of our form was a bit average, but um, in the end, we're happy with the amount of game time we got into everyone. Now, we're playing a traditional rival in Carlton tonight. A lot of talk about this round one game against Carlton and Richmond, whether we deserve it. What's your thoughts on that? Oh, well, I grew up a Tiger, Matthew, and, I, and uh, I grew up with Richmond and Carlton having a massive rivalry, and I think it's fantastic that that's continuing. Uh, and, and look, I don't think football should be made on, uh, decisions should be made on, on form necessarily. Yeah. We're, we're going to drag 75,000 people to the game tonight, uh, and I don't remember off the top of my head what the figures have been the last two years, yeah. but crowds have been massive, and I think it's important that uh, as we expand our competition that some of the traditional rivalries um, yeah. remain. Well, we spoke to Damien Hardwick during the week and got his thoughts on this issue. Listen, I think the, the round one expectation, you know, every side's looking for, you know, to win every game. And we're no different. We want to win as many games as humanly possible. But the thing is, we are in a process at the moment here of getting many games into the core group of kids that we think can take us out of the, the position we're in at the moment. So whether that's round one, we get experience into those guys. We look for a great result. But at the end of the day, it's a long-term focus for us. Yeah, we want to win. At the end of the day, we just want to win a, win a game of football. So we're going to put out the best side there possible. You know, look to put in a really good show and hopefully come out with four points at the end of it. Well, Craig, let's get on to the game tonight. Ten changes from this time last year. I don't know if we count Goose Graham, but ten new players. That's a huge turnover in 12 months. Yeah, it's, there's five brand new players for us. Obviously, with, um, with Basher Hooley, Sean Grigg, Jake Batchelor, yeah. Reese Conker and... Um, and also Brad Helby coming into play. And yeah. then from the game, the, the same game last year, we have five other, five other players who didn't play in that game. So yeah. it's important for us to continue to turn over our list and find the players that are going to take us in the direction we want to go yeah. in. And also to ensure that we keep getting experience into players along the journey. So it's, look, it's really good for our fans again. They'll come along yeah. and see three debutantes and, and two new players for us as well. So that's great. Well, the fans out there probably know a little bit about Basher Hawley and Sean Grigg. But tell us about the three new guys, Conker, Hell big and Bachelor. Uh, well, Reese is from Perth Footy Club. Uh, he's played a lot of football in the midfield as a junior, but played some senior football last yeah. year for Perth down back. Um, he's got really good decision making uh, abilities. He's quick. Um, he's good with his feet in terms of disposal, uh, and he's a really good character young man. So yeah. look, we're looking forward to him. Uh, running out and playing for us. Jake Batchelor, another great character. Yeah. Um, really good left foot kick. Um, very good sort of sweeping defender. Uh, good size. He's got good defensive skills, which we're really happy with. Yeah. And Brad Helbig, sort of the surprise packet, I suppose. He, mm. he came to us a little bit sore, um, had, had a few groin issues, but his pre-season, once he got himself right, has been yeah. outstanding. He's from Wakery up in the in the Riverland of South Australia, which is the home of Mark Rusciuto. And yeah. Uh, he's got a little bit of meanness about him, Brad, which need. the Tigers, Tigers fans like. So, um, yeah, we're looking forward to him as well. well. It's a great sign for the club with our first three draft picks playing tonight. We spoke to Jake Batchelor during the week also. And how have you found the pre-season so far coming into a new club? Yeah, great. The, uh, the boys at Richmond are uh, very helpful. They're, uh, they've made the transition from local junior footy to uh, AFL a lot easier than, than what, I was, what I was expecting. So, yeah, couldn't have asked for a better pre-season so far. And a Tiger fan saw you play as a half-back sort of running a rebounder. Have you had much to do with um, Brett Deledio and Chris Newman, our type of half-back players? Yeah, I'm definitely trying to mould my game on them. Uh, I see that they're probably one of the two of the best uh, rebounding defenders in the, in the whole AFL competition. So definitely trying to, I'm annoying them a little bit, trying to get as much info out of, the, out of them as possible. So, yeah. Have you been surprised by uh, what it's like to come into a new AFL club and what's required of AFL players these days? 
Yeah, a little bit. Um, I knew that it was obviously a full-time job and it uh, takes up a lot of lot of time in your life. So I guess it's your number one priority because you always want to get the best out of yourself. So the more the harder you work, the better results you'll get. So, yeah. And what about goals for this season? Are you planning to, uh, you know, for a round one berth or are you just trying to get a few games throughout the season? Round one would be great. Yeah, we'd love to play round one in, uh, in front of 80,000 against Carlton, but um, I'm just going to try and give myself the best opportunity to play as soon as possible. Just keep training, keep doing the little things right and see how we go. Craig, round one is the focus, but it's a long, long year. What are your expectations for the year with this group? Um, well, our expectations, first of all, for round one is that yeah. we, um, we clearly want to win the game um, and what we need to be is competitive right from the outset. Yeah. Um, but in the long term, uh, it's really important that we improve on last year and that, I mean, that's a term that you'll hear a lot, but to, to try and define it, we need to make sure that we keep getting experience into our younger players. We, um, last year we beat two top eight sides in Fremantle and Sydney, yeah. so I'd like to think that we can improve on that. Yeah. this year and beat a few more top eight sides and really ta start to take some scalps and, and show our fans that uh, we've been talking about the fact we're going to have a good future and they need to start seeing a bit of that this year. So it's to yeah. give them a bit of excitement as well. No doubt. It's going to be an exciting game tonight against the Blues. Let's hope all you Tiger fans get there and join us next week on Raw Vision for the Raw Preview Show and we'll have a look at the Round 2 clash. Go Tigers! Richman made four changes to face Carlton, including Irishman Jamie O'Reilly and David Gordas, bringing to 11 the number of Richmond debutants for the season. Carlton coach Brett Ratton called for the Blues to back up the effort and ferocity shown in the demolition of Essendon last weekend to maintain their spot in the top eight. Daniel Jackson got the Tigers on the board before Jeff Garlett missed a sitter from in front before sailing one through from the boundary. There you go. There you go. That's a goal. Lockie Henderson won a marking contest from which he kicked Carlton's second major. Enough to make Richmond's Brett Delidio believe Lockie worked up a lather. There's no, you're not allowed any contact to the face. He was just wiping a bit of sweat yeah, off. He was sweat off being so, a good uh, Samaritan. Carlton had ten scoring shots to three, but the Tigers got within two goals when Jake King shook off his rivals. At the back of the pack, here's King or just uh, changed his mind at the last minute, but still gets the goal in the end for Richmond. The Blues engine room hummed into action to put last weekend's six-goal star in prime position. Betts and Judd combined. Judd tries to bring it back. That was a clever kick, and Garlett kicks the goal. Henderson continued Carlton's scoring dominance. Then Richard Hadley kicked his first goal of the season. He just drives it deep to the goal square, beyond the goal line. It's a goal. What a beauty from Richard Hadley. Sean Griggs seemed to swipe the shaving cream left on Jackson's chin, while Heath Scotland carried Carlton's score into the 50s. It's coming back with the breeze. It's a goal. Ben Cousins struggled to get off the field in a hurry, but returned soon after as the Blues bamboozled the Tigers, kicking seven goals four to just one behind for the quarter. Another goal. Henderson's got it. At halftime, Carlton led Richmond 72-15. The Blues opened the season with a 56-point thrashing of Richmond and this encounter was heading the same way with Eddie Betts, Jared Waite and Chris Judd knocking in goals before Jack Revolt stopped the rot. Jack Revolt on top of the Coleman medal has kicked the goal. The Tigers struck their best scoring period and even on one leg, Cousins got among the scorers. Cousins, yes! Jaden Post showed strength up front and he converted it into Richmond's fourth straight major. Keep going at this rate, they can win the game. Waite bruised the advertising sign before curling in his third goal to kick Carlton past the century mark. Chad Waite's kicked two goals. He can make that three. 54 points clear at the final change. Carlton moved ahead when Waite and Garlett found little resistance before Robert Warnock timed his run well. Ah, oh, big mark to Robbie Warnock. Can he capitalise? He can indeed. While Carlton was in the comfort zone, Richmond pinched a pair of goals through Dustin Martin and Ben Mason before Jordan Russell became the Blues' 11th individual goal kicker. Target Robinson, well done Collins at the back. Oh, just waiting at the back was Russell from 30 metres. He pops it through, another one. Jack Revolt moved to 68 goals, three clear of Barry Hall in the race for the Coleman medal, while Scotland charged into action. Scotland now can run to the front of the centre square. He can go all the way, he's Scotland from out. Just inside 50, he kicks a beauty. Eight goals for the Blues in the final quarter, 
as Carlton shored up its finals chances, running away from Richmond to win 156-67. Charles Christian, Big Pond Sport.